Now, one thing that Boston is known for is its booming biotech scene. One major player in the field it's Bluebird Bio. The company's platforms encompass gene therapy, cancer immunotherapy, and gene editing, and recently announced that healthcare company Novartis and pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline will pay undisclosed sums to license its technology for delivering genetic material into cells. Joining us now is none other than the CEO of Bluebird Bio, Nick Nashley. Nick, wonderful to have you here. Thank you In for a, It's trying to be sunny for us. A little um, chilly. Give us, therefore, First of all, how your gene therapy, vis-a-vis -vis the competition, whether it's here in Boston or abroad, compares? So it compares. I mean, gene therapy is a broad space, right? But what it really compares on, what we try to compare on, is the data that we have and the impact it's having on patients. I mean, as a concept and the promise of gene therapy has always been, you can go in and you can fundamentally alter disease. You can potentially cure disease. And that's the big differentiator for some of the programs that we work on and some really terrible diseases where we've been able to, and now still small numbers of patients, but we're progressing, fundamentally go from not just kind of ameliorating or an incremental benefit, but potentially curing these patients. I mean, meaning giving them a lifelong benefit. And that is converting the promise of gene therapy that I think all of us have perhaps been rooting for, certainly in the biotech space. That's what Bluebird's all about, and that's what we're trying to do. And a number of the, broadly speaking, gene therapy companies, whether it's gene editing, and there's a whole class of us that are trying to really do something important for patients. And doing it here in Boston and the greater Massachusetts, how important has the ecosystem been for you and some of your rivals or frenemies, as they might be? No, I think we're all trying to do the same thing. So we try to sort of think of it as co-opetition in that sense. <laughs> but Boston has been fabulous. Um, it's really developed into an ecosystem over the last, let's say, decade, where you have everything you need in the sense that it starts with academia and ideas, with research and the innovation that comes with it, that moves to the medical institution, the translational nature that that brings, and the talent that that brings along with it. And then you have the investors, so venture people who really start to seed and start companies, just like Bluebird, where I was originally at a place called Third Rock Ventures to help start uh, Bluebird, uh, sort of restart it, if you will. But then you also have investors, like public investors and others, that can help carry it to the next stage. And then you have biopharma and pharmaceuticals. All we heard earlier in your show, the R&D centers are here. So you kind of have everything you need, plus all the talent, and that's the key part. So the sweet spot, maybe a perfect storm. I want to dig into two of those areas you bring up, talent being one of them, the VC side of you being the other. Talent, how much at the moment is that an area of optimism for you, or is there any concern, particularly with the current administration clamping down potentially on immigration to a certain extent? I think that's an important uh, context. So talent to try to cure disease has to come from a global uh, pool. And so it's not all going to be in Boston. There's a tremendous number of people who come here to study and would love to stay here to continue their research or their ideas, whatever it may be. So that is incredibly important that wherever we land politically, that we have an ability that is an open sort of gate towards innovation. Uh, that's certainly something I personally feel strongly about and Bluebird in particular has benefited from. So our talent pool relies on that and that's something that we certainly um, are trying to actively support and encourage. And that I think still stays there and Boston in and of itself has been incredibly supportive. I'm not worried about the talent pool, but it changes. As we get bigger, some of the people that really loved working for Bluebird are thinking about, I wanna go back and start the new thing, Yeah. right? And that's okay, that creates a healthy turnover. And that's something we've seen from big pharma companies all the way down to two, three piece of, uh, person companies. So it's fun to be part of. And so perhaps people from your venture going off and spawning other new startups, what about your previous role as a VC? I'm interested in what about the ecosystem of money being built here in Massachusetts? Yeah. Is, is it starting to build? Does it need to? Are you just waiting for international money to flow in and indeed moving to the public markets? Yeah. I think it's been here for some time. Uh, it's been here a lot of uh, early on in the IT sector and the tech sector. And then biotech was here, was more on the medical device side. Now it's very heavy on the biotech side. But there's different types of money. There are some of the earlier stage companies like 5AM Ventures or Atlas or Polaris or Third Rocks. They really try to foster and initiate companies. Smaller dollars, still relatively big in my book, but smaller dollars. And then as they get bigger, you need the bigger investors. You need the fidelities of the world who are also here to really carry you to the next uh, step. And that, so it's here. It's just a matter of selecting the right ideas and cultivating them. And that's, the ecosystem's been good at that. You went public. 
Does it suit these long-term bets that biotech and that Bluebird Bio in its very nature does? How long-term are your investors when you are on a public market such as the Nasdaq? Yeah, well, as, as I know, I'm sure you know the quote, you get the investors you deserve to some extent, right? And so if each company cultivates itself having a long-term vision, I think you can select for investors that do have the long-term nature. It is a constant struggle as a CEO. One of the things I don't particularly love is there is a short-term horizon that you have to understand at least. You don't necessarily have to operate the company for that short term because you do have to take a position on where do you want to be three years, five years. And so that's certainly where Bluebird is, but you have to be cognizant of both. And that's a reasonable pressure, right? Because everyone has to contribute their part. And you can't just say, I'm worried about 10 years from now. When you have a lot of investors that are important and have supported the company, you have to be cognizant of that and manage to that. So I think that's a, a natural tension um, that we all as CEOs have to certainly consider and respect quarterly joy what about <laughs> three to five years you said you've got to be looking out to that time frame talk to us therefore about the deals been struck with Novartis with Glaxo how does your business continue to evolve as it works on some of these rare diseases and breakthrough technologies yeah. you know that's an interesting one that actually dates back to some of the innovation we talked about and some of the early stage IP in the field in our case of gene therapy where we use a particular type of virus that now has become part of a lot of these car therapies or immunotherapies that you've seen that Novartis is working on it's also part of other programs for some really important diseases that GSK is working on and one of the things that we Bluebird certainly would not want to stand in the way of is allowing them to sort of take those forward to patients and to provide and to the providers to use them. So that was what the nature of that deal. It was an enabling deal. It was a way for us to participate uh, in and share in our intellectual property with them. And so that's a good thing. But really, we're focused on the main driver for Bluebird is trying to do what they're doing, which is to actually to create products that make a big difference for patients. And that's our emphasis. And that ultimately is what I think our shareholders are expecting from us and they should expect from us. And that's the standard we hold ourselves to.